step is to obtain water availability. So what is the meaning of water availability means? Uh, suppose if you take this cross section of the river, so what is the water available in this river that we have to find out? How we have to find out that then uh, we have to find out the water availability by measuring, measuring the river discharge. So how to measure this river discharge? You see, uh, we, we have the current meter and area method. So this is the current meter. So the current meter gives uh, velocity at particular points wherever you keep this uh, current meter and it will give the velocity. And uh, areas uh, uh, like this area you have to work out uh, and uh, with the velocity and uh, with the area multiplication you will get the discharge. And the other method is this gauge record. This, like I have shown here this red marks. So this is the gauge reading. So whenever there is excess uh, discharge in the river, it is not possible to measure the discharges by current meter. So these gauge discharges will give the level at which the water is flowing in the river. So already defined uh, area, uh, we will um, develop some rating curve. Rating curve means it will give the discharge corresponding to the different different levels. Suppose water is flowing at this level, what will be the discharge? Water is flowing at this level, what will be the discharge? So, with using gauge reading and the rating curve, also you can find out the river discharges. Or there are some more new techniques also, technologies also available, uh, like uh, uh, someone without using current meter and gauge reading, also you can find out using uh, non contact uh, river discharge measurements. So, uh, this river discharge data, at least you should collect. For, or you should obtain for more than 10 years or so to have a sufficient uh, data and also for useful information. So with this data you should work out the dependable year yield values. So what is dependable year, year yield values we will check now. So what are dependability is suppose if you are planning a dam, if you are planning a dam uh, only for uh, drinking and industrial purposes then you should the design dam that for that water should be available 100% at times. And if you are designing the project for irrigation and hydro power, it, uh, the dependability value should take 70 to 90 percentage. That way, uh, this varies uh, from country to country according to their codes or their guidelines. Suppose, uh, what is the meaning of 70 percentage means? Uh, suppose uh, in, in a day, uh, it requires some. Uh, 10 MCM, even uh, you can able to pro provide only 70 percentage of that also, that is okay for irrigation. So remaining 30 percentage, okay, they uh, they allow it for like, uh, it is okay without 30 percentage also. But uh, the drinking and industrial, if you are designing the project for uh, drinking uh, and industrial purpose, then whatever the water available or the water storage you are planning uh, behind the dam, that should meet the 100% demands. So you will see the example for this. Suppose you see here, these are the uh, discharge data. Uh, uh, it's just an example. So these are the years considered uh, like 2001 to 2014. These are the flow values uh, uh, in the storage terms. Like uh, if you multiply the discharge values with the time, you, like e yearly time, it will give the MCM. So in the 2001 year, we had 180 MCM, up to 2014, we had 230 with varying values. So if you keep these values in decreasing order, you will have this at 320, 300, up to 100. So with the percentage uh, formula, you will get uh, these percentages. So you can clearly observe uh, this 100 value, the lowest value, So, but that is having 93 percentage means the flow value or the storage uh, available in that uh, storage uh, flow value of 100 MCM is available 93 percentage times. Whereas 320 it is highest but it occurs only 7 percentage. O only the dependability is only 7 percentage. That means out of this, uh, uh, if you planning for a uh, project for 100 years, it will this 320 will have only uh, will be available only seven years only. Out of 100 years, you, you will get it only for seven years. But whereas if you plan the dam for 100 uh, MCM, then all the years you will be having minimum 100 year 100 MCMs. So 
that is the significance of this uh, dependability so if you are planning a pro- dam project for drinking purpose and industrial you should consider 100% dependability and irrigation and hydropower according to the country specific it varies from 70 to 90 percentage then if you see if they use this uh, this table uh, to find out the dependability the drinking and industrial purpose 100 percentage that is uh, you can see here that is almost 93 percentage which we can take it as 100 mcm so this 100 mcm it is occurring in 2004 so these values these uh, monthly values we will uh, use for further analysis or further uh, deduction of uh, exact uh, calculations like if you are designing this project for uh, like uh, 80 percent dependability that is coming around like 0.8 uh, it is coming around uh, 150 mcm 150 mcm is uh, occurring in 2009 so in 2009 uh, flow values you will uh, you will be using these values in detail for the further calculations so this is the uh, uh, significance of dependability next step is collection of topographical information so topographical information gives a crucial inputs uh, for the dam designs so this topographical information generally be obtained through using total station or in the recent uh, advanced uh, technologies we can use as uh, a drones drones also gives a uh, very fast uh, and accurate topographical information so what is uh, this topographical information gives so topographical information gives the elevations of the surface like if you see here this is the contour map generated uh, by either total station or a drone survey so this uh, contour maps means these lines are the we can call them as contours so these contours will have unique uh, elevation values of the uh, location of the particular topography so uh, if you see here we, what we require in this dam uh, designs are we, we require some intervals like 1 meter or 5 meter or, or suitable intervals like uh, so this difference between these two contours is that it is a contour interval if it is a 5 meter contour in, interval means if it is a 10 meter contour interval and if it is an increasing trend this is a 15 meter in, contour that means that elevation at this particular location is 15 meters and the elevation at this uh, contour it will be 20 meters like that so once we obtain this contour map, we can generate uh, various cross sections at the required locations. Like if you want the cross section at this, uh, we know the elevation. So if you plot, uh, it will roughly come like this. So this is the cross sections. So once we get the cross sections, the next important step is to develop the area elevation capacity curve. So if you see the area elevation capacity curve, so what is the m- meaning of this area elevation capacity curve? Means uh, uh, we will plot elevation versus area and elevation versus capacity so if you see this cross section the bottom level is 100 meters and the top, uh, uh, there are uh, more levels uh, like if you, increase, if you go up uh, it will be 200 and more also so at uh, 100 uh, 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 elevation the area will be zero but as we uh, go up like at this level so the area covered uh, at this contour it will be somewhat like more than 15, 15 or 26 like that so if you uh, plot the area area occupied by this contour it will be the uh, we, we will uh, enter it here so accordingly up to uh, like uh, just example we have taken up to 220 so 220 means it's just more above that so we, we can observe right uh, we, uh, as we go up uh, the area is getting increased so the area of submergence we can call them as uh, area of submergence or the area covered under this contour so next is to calculate the volume so if you see uh, as we go from 100 to higher elevations the uh, now you see here this is the uh, volume so when we keep the uh, dam top as 200 meters so this is the total volume so how we obtain this volume is this area area we have already obtained and the interval so the contour interval and the area uh, if you multiply using the formulas it will we will get the volume so that uh, then when then uh, if we add this cumulative then we will get a cumulative uh, capacity so so at the 100 meter uh, interval 100 meter elevation the capacity is zero because there is nothing to store at this level as we go up at the 200 elevation we are almost getting 2630 units of uh, capacity so if you see this graph so at the 100 elevation the area this blue curve is showing the area so area is zero 
whereas at the 100 uh, this uh, uh, orange color is showing capacity so it is also showing zero uh, suppose uh, uh, at particular elevation like uh, some 200 so 200 this elevation is almost uh, at the area is almost uh, uh, at 95 and uh, if you read on the capacity at uh, 200 elevations it is almost at uh, uh, on this curve it is uh, 2600 like that so this is how we have to read this area elevation capacity curve and it is very useful uh, in uh, fixing the levels so next step is fixation of levels so we now we have obtained the area elevation capacity curve so uh, first in this first uh, level we have to fix is the minimum drawdown level or the level below which we cannot utilize the water so minimum drawdown level generally we fix uh, for 75 years or 100 years or the project life uh, what we designed for so in that duration what will be the sediment deposit volume so that we will consider as uh, uh, minimum drawdown level then frl full reservoir level we selected by power potential studies for hydropower or reservoir simulation for irrigation and other purposes so for, so if you take 140 140 as the minimum drawdown level and 200 and 200 uh, is the frl so the capacity difference right 200 uh, we are almost getting 2600 and at 140 the uh, capacity is 500 so if you say take the difference that 2000 volume 2000 uh, mcm 2000 bcm or whatever units you take 2000 volume is available between 200 and 140 elevations so that much vol volume of uh, water we can utilize if you fix uh, for as 200 and mddl as 140 so what is meant by this power potential studies or reservoir simulation studies so in the in these studies first we assume a one initial level of reservoir then we have inflows so we will deduct some outlet releases like and losses also then we will also deduct uh, water uh, diverted for irrigation or power purposes or domestic purposes then we will obtain some uh, reduced volume for that corresponding volume you will or uh, for the increased volume because if the inflow is very high and the releases are very less then the volume will increase if the inflow is very less the, the outlet uh, releases losses and the water per irrigation or power is more then the water level will come down so then this final reservoir level will be used for other simulation then the, it will become the initial reservoir level for the next uh, uh, iterations so we will do this uh, iterations per almost uh, per one year or two years for uh, hydropower and uh, for irrigation we will see for more than five six years continuously to see whether the assumed uh, storage between frl and mddl is serving the purpose or not 